I remember taking some design classes with Carl Reed. One of his classes, I made my first wooden puzzle box. Uh, I just told him at the beginning of the block, I've had this idea since middle school, I've wanted to make it out of wood. And would it be okay if I don't do any of the projects in the block and I just do this one project and set instead? That was the first time I did that. And ever since then, I kind of kept trying to find ways into the Colorado College of Wood Shop and slowly befriended the shop uh, supervisor and he started to let me in there in the evenings and I started to learn, just self-teach myself a lot of woodworking. He taught me some things too, so. But aside from kind of sneaking into the wood shop and taking whatever art courses I could that were at the wood shop, uh, I did a lot of math classes and I did love all the, you know, most all of the math professors. Uh, I think I love it when things get a little bit, uh, when there no rules apply. You just kind of have to make it up and see what happens and get through it. And it's usually very quick uh, moments in a project where you have to invent, be very, like kind of invent new rules just to apply to a very specific situation. And then that's kind of the creative process coming in and taking over. Um, so I think the math was kind of the original inspiration. I'd use that to kind of set the project up and kind of think it out and draw it out on graph paper and here's what it should do. Uh, but then I'd use the artistic process to kind of um, just see what happens, kind of let it evolve. After graduation, I went and did math department pair prof and then made puzzles in the wood shop on the side. Um, so I was kind of naturally doing it, but still in my mind, I, had, I did not think I would do this as a full-time career. I thought, okay, this is fun for now. I better get it out of my system. I'm not going to get a chance to do this. You know, probably going to go to grad school and stay with math or something like that. And it, I never did that. I just kind of kept doing boxes and I decided to take a break from school and go to Portland and see what happens. Like there's a point where I worked with a company early on to, who sold my work for me, uh, that, uh, they did that for the first year or two and I just produced it. And they went under, they had major problems and kind of folded. And I thought, oh, well, I guess I'll try selling this myself. And then at some point I made up my mind, no, I think I'm just going to do one last box and then call it. And that particular box, I entered into uh, this design competition that's held every year at, uh, with a group of people who collect puzzles. It was in Tokyo this year, and I actually traveled to the event, went to Tokyo for the first time. I thought this will just be like really fun kind of finish to this whole thing. I'll go meet these people. This is my last box. Who cares? Well, it like won the competition and then like 20 people immediately, like you can't stop. Like you need to make at least some of these boxes for us and then, then you can stop, you know? And so it kept, I think that moment was kind of telling in that there were just these, all these little spots where it get really hard I'd reconsider, you know, wasn't making a lot of money for a long time and things like that. And I think I would question it. And then things would happen, it would get fun. And it just like, I think the sort of, there was kind of a soul to it that I just couldn't let go of. It was, uh, I think that the work had a life of its own and I felt that would kind of draw me back in. When, when I see things that I think are very innovative, I think, wow, they took a material and they made it do something that didn't seem possible. It didn't seem like a material could do that. Or they took a tool and made it do something that that tool seemed uh, incapable of doing. So I think uh, for me, innovation is, is, yeah, just really pushing uh, that, the limits of, limitations of what materials and tools can accomplish.